Um, I think given the incredible flexibility of what Mahara can do, um, you could use it for all manner of accessible or optional additional formative tasks. Um, or you may simply need to be aware that it exists to remind students to collect their work as they go. It's too late later if you haven't gathered things as you go. So some of the, the, um, the ways that you might consider using it, depending on the kind of subject, um, in a, a, a practicum or field-based um, subject, you may simply ask students to keep a journal of their experiences over time. In a more theoretical conceptual subject, um, it may be an ideal place for students to gather examples of the way that concepts play out. Um, it may be that you have a substantial group project in your subject and Mahara may simply be the place where the students document the group process. It may not be the artefact that's presented for the assignment. Um, it may be a space where you suggest to students that they, in a, a later year subject, present key ideas to potential employers. Um, and but in a capstone kind of subject, you may specifically target its use for present your work to a future employer. So given that there are lots of activities for which Mahara might be useful, how does it fit in with Moodle? It's simply an additional component to the learning platform. It's going to intimately connect to Moodle in two ways. Um, you may set the students a Mahara assignment and that will enable the students to submit one single Mahara page for the activity, just one page. Or you may encourage students to export some of their participation in your Moodle site as artefacts into their Mahara portfolio. So they're the two likely ways um, that it would link in with the, the platform. Um, I think if you have the luxury of thinking through a new program or you're taking the opportunity to review a program and that's going to be quite a typical scenario, um, there's a chance to adopt a team approach to really plan how you're going to use Mahara in a, a whole course. Typically, at the beginning of the course, um, and this is emphasised more if you're involved in a professional preparation course, um, students need to know upfront what the expectations are of the whole course. So you may begin the course with the expectations and potentially a small Mahara assignment simply to introduce them to the tool and the environment. So I think a formal introduction in that instance is very worthwhile. They know about it and they can collect things along the way. Um, I think all team members can encourage students to gather um, aspects of their work, to gather documents, photos, contribute discussion um, items, etc. Then in targeted subjects, it's worth setting larger tasks in Mahara. For example, a, a key reflection at the end of a subject where it distills the ideas from a much more substantial body of work. So you're really helping them identify the kind of skills they need to draw aspects together throughout a, um, a course. Generally, um, if you've started with that expectation framework, um, other activities might gear them to looking back at that framework and identifying where their strengths are and where some of the gaps might be. That gives you the opportunity then to support more generally the development of, of skills around those expectations. 
And then towards the end of a course, something like a capstone subject where you really target pulling the key ideas from the course together, looking back at the expectation framework and presenting it.